that's systematic, systematically unacceptable. The Hunter Biden laptop. Is the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, which was shut down, had the Twitter account locked, for anybody who is even sharing the story of the Hunter Biden laptop found on the eve of the last election, the media reported that it was Russian disinformation on the eve of that election. Does anyone here agree that the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, was indeed accurately reported and was not Russian disinformation, but was in fact a factually owned laptop of Hunter Biden? I mean, you, you got to, man. I mean, your, your paper reported it. <laughs> does, anybody, does everybody else seriously not believe that? I mean, I believe so, that Hunter Biden is suing Rudy Giuliani over the laptop, so I don't think that's... So, so you don't believe, so you think that it actually was the product of Russian disinformation, as was reported by the media, that was the basis for suppressing this at the time? For the Hunter Biden case, yeah. I'm not sure why we're talking about that. Because it was election interference on the eve of the last election. And I think there's the same kind of election interference happening this time around. And I think it's happening, the early waves of it, with respect to the treatment of my candidacy. And I think that that is likely to be a major problem heading into the next year unless we're able to open and openly and transparently acknowledge the mistakes of the past. Without acknowledging the mistakes of the past, I think we are destined for an even more dangerous future. And I do not want to see a repeat of what happened in the 12 to 15 months leading up to January of 2021. I don't want to see that in this country. And I worry we're on a path to far worse than that until we have accountability 360 degrees for the mistakes that were made in that lead up. And the Hunter Biden laptop story and its suppression, Shauna, I do believe was a key part of the lead up to that. I think the suppression of the origin of COVID and the origin of the pandemic was a key part of the lead up to what happened in January of 2021. I think that the systematic suppression of speech in this country, even about debating the lockdowns, was a key part of what culminated in January 6, 2021. And as somebody who's looking to lead this country and hopefully, dare I say, reunite this country, I think it is critical, it is vital to the future of this country that we not repeat those same mistakes, and yet that's exactly what I'm seeing play out in slow motion, hiding in plain sight. What's going on, everyone? Sox with Ken here today, and I want to kind of analyze propaganda, right? And I've been thinking for a while, you know, with uh, all this media stuff that I've been following, all the news cycles and stuff, I, I've just been thinking that I think we have a propaganda problem here in America. Yes, I know old news but i think we need to ask ourselves a question who will hold the media accountable and i don't want it to be like hey i want to find some third party to verify and trust for me what the media says or tell me the accurate information on what's going on in the world i think that's a very i mean that's a short i mean that's a more immediate approach like a more immediate way of fixing the problem but i think from a long-term perspective I want to go with the words of, I don't know if it was Benjamin Franklin, it's a republic if you can keep it. And I think one of the avenues for keeping our republic is that every single American citizen is educated and have a at least a moderate understanding of how their a government operates, the Constitution, and exactly how to, I guess, fact check for themselves. Because I think... Like, this is where I, I get kind of confused with the Marxists. This is the reason why the left like to take over institutions, because institutions give some form of credibility, regardless if it's warranted or not. And the left abuse that credibility to say their nonsense. And they know it's going to get a lot of reach and a lot of people are going to take it as something um, credible is because they're using the platform. They're using the New York Times, Washington Post. They're using these big name institutions, and this is why they took they took over corporate America because they like the that authority, right? And this is the ways that uh, liberals are authoritarians, right? They omit authoritarianism, like they they act like, oh, I'm not an authoritarian. I'm just a tyrant that loves you as long as you do what I say. They always, you know, they omit things. They don't they don't tell you the complete story. Right. They use their worldview conjecture and they pretend that, oh, this is objective facts. And you see it through the, the mention in the intro where Vivek is saying, hey, you guys know it's wrong. Can you admit today it's wrong? They don't want to admit they're, they're wrong. Now, and here's an interesting conversation in this next clip. And then I'm going through some more few examples of how we've been propagandized to have this current uh, worldview and assumptions that we have today. Let's take a look. The media is supposed to hold politicians accountable. They don't. They're running interference for a subset of those politicians to advance their agenda. Not just Democrats. 
but anybody who's advancing the pro-statist uniparty agenda, Nikki Haley fits that description, absolutely. But who's holding the media accountable? The answer right now is nobody. Right. And so if somebody out there wanted to, I mean, running for politics, running for president, you know, starting a podcast, it's not the only way to drive change and open people's eyes. I think there's an opportunity for somebody to, you know, I, I would say probably right of center or conservative, but it doesn't have to be, but somebody with integrity to say we're actually going to hold the media accountable right. in a systematic, incredible way. And I think that thing is missing in our ecosystem, but I'm trying to do as best of a job as I can, yeah. even though I'm actually, it's not my main job, I'm running for U.S. president. It's been a side job that I've assumed in this campaign, and I think it's been productive in the short time we've been in this. Yeah. One of the things that I think I've noticed uh, just in, in traveling so much and speaking to people is that there does seem to be this sort of a mental block where people understand, you know, Russian Pravda. We understand propaganda as for yes. to other countries, but we don't understand that it's, it's also operating in this country as well. We're not right. unique to this. There is state-run media, and there they exist to advance state causes. Which makes me wonder, with the way you phrase that, Candace, I wonder if the people in those countries, I wonder the way they see it. They see it as the in... U.S. has a propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. Like if you're if you're like in Russia right now or whatever, the U.S. has a propaganda machine. But I'm, yeah, I'm getting the truth. That is how it exists. And, and, and I suppose if they view it that way, that might be eye opening for us to be wondering whether we're actually falling into that same trap and right. trick. Right. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. That was a great clip. I mean, as always, I'll leave the full videos in the uh, in the link in the description. But that's an interesting question. Who's going to hold the media accountable? Right. And I think it should just be the people. The people should be like, yo, we should be like a, such a well-informed people. Right. Because I think uh, there's a saying socialists always make this argument. And this is why it's not in the socialist best interest to have educated or skeptical people. Uh, I think it was uh, uh uh, Voldemort, you know, you know who I'm talking about. If you've been on this channel for a long time, who I'm talking about, the German Voldemort. He says that how lucky for a government that its people are stupid. I think that's what the word he used. So authoritarians, these government overreach can only prosper, can only expand under an ignorant people. Right. And I, this is a term I always mention. It's called rational ignorance. The, it's the idea that people are willfully ignorant about things because they don't get an immediate benefit from obtaining the knowledge. There's no knowledge in learning all this stuff. Right. If there's no practical use for learning politics, most people are like, eh, I don't need to learn politics. That's why most voters are uninformed voters. Like, you know, they make up the majority of, of voters in this country. This is why the Democrats love taking over institutions. That's why they love taking over Hollywood, because uneducated voters are easily influenced by rhetoric by media look like for instance like this from the view who says i'm gonna be on day one i'm gonna be a dictator who says it to you tells you i'm gonna put you people away i'm gonna take all the journalists i'm gonna take all the gay folks so trump did say that he would be a dictator but he was saying it jokingly right this is the the context this is why i like when people show proof of what they have to say. That's why I try to show as much clips and videos as I can, or at least point you in the direction of where I'm claiming the information is coming from. They don't do that in the mainstream media, right? This is just supposed to be a talk show, right? And who watches this? Political people like me might, might watch this, but their primary audience are not people who are politically informed at that level. So they easily are swayed by uh, someone as famous as this person. I forgot her name, Whoopi Goldberg. And if she says something, it has weight and some type of credibility to her audience. And most people who watch her, I think they're low information voters. I'm just saying, right? Last time I checked, Democratic Party was the only party that wanted the voting age lower. So if you want the voting age lower, is that are you asking for more informed voters or more ignorant voters? I'll claim you're asking for more ignorant voters because what? Democrats benefit from high turnout. Why? Because they have control of the media and many ignorant voters sorry i'm not gonna say ignorant many low information voters are passively liberals so they know hey on the pro odds of probability we'll we'll win most of that vote here's another here's another post that i found that kind of highlights some of the, the concerns that i have this is a, tw uh, a tweet or a post from elon musk the propaganda level in legacy media has become tediously high, but also remarkable for how almost all legacy media repeat the same lies verbatim. 
right? And this is something I want to be in the consciousness of America, the consciousness of the world, if possible. But I have to focus on my community first, which is America. We need to realize, hey, look, a lot of these uh, media uh, personalities that's on mainstream media, alternative media, I think it's more fair. It's more honest because, you know, it's regular people like me, uh, Ben Shapiro, for instance. Right. You know, hey, Ben Shapiro got a bias. We all know we, we're all human. We all we, we all know that. But for some reason, we don't have that same level of skepticism because someone's in front of a helicopter in a high production uh, studio and we think he's giving us objective news. Right. And that's one thing I want to kind of spread in the consciousness in our knowledge system as a nation is that, oh, we skeptical of everything. Be skeptical. Oh, I need proof of that. Oh, you can't prove it. Then that's an assumption. Oh, that's conjecture on your part. I'm going to go look for the contrary opinion and make the decision for myself. I want that to be embedded in the American culture. I think this is one way of doing that. Right. So here's an example. If people in the media cannot decide whether they are in the business of reporting news or manufacturing propaganda, it is all the more important that the, the public understands that difference and choose their news sources accordingly. Exactly. That's why I have the ground news thing. It tells me the bias of the newspaper and then I can take uh, an objective opinion about that. I'll say, okay, this is a left wing point of view of, of a left wing interpretation of events. What's my interpretation of events? Do I have something that counters what they're saying here? Or it, I, I notice some conflict or is there some weird framing that they're trying to frame the argument in a way? And here's an example. Interracial violent crimes of 2008. Look at the crime for blacks. Look at the crimes for Hispanic, white, white on Hispanic, Hispanic on white and Hispanic on black, right? White on black crime. Look at the, look, look, that's the mainstream media controlling perception. This is why alternative media is the future. This is why all, all these uh, corporations, these mainstream media corporate reporters and journalists are mad and telling YouTube that you need to redirect traffic to authoritative sources, AKA real news, legacy media, right? Here's another example of how I believe we're, we're continuing to becoming propagandized uh, and why we have a propaganda problem. This is from Robert F. Kennedy. More made up science. If you doubt it back then, you were ridiculed as anti-science, censored, silenced. Now it's becoming tr uh, clear. Trust the science really means obey authority. And I've been telling you for a long time, trust the science is, is a political term made by the left. People on Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s side. Fauci just admitted to Congress that the six foot social distancing rule was completely made up and had zero scientific basis. Incredible. Right. This is appeal to authority. This is the authority, the fallacy of authority. Just because someone of, a, of authority said something, it, then it must be true. That's a fallacy. And the left utilize this fallacy. I don't know how many times many of their arguments rely on the, uh, the, the uh, authority of the fallacy of authority. An example of propaganda, and this is you could probably take this as my bias take, but abortion. Thinking about that, right? And this is a pro-life uh, advocate. Thinking about the time that time uh, that time HBO girls attempted to normalize abortion as women's empowerment, but all I can see is a devastating reaction of a father to be who just found out his baby was murdered. So this is another form of propaganda. How like. A lot of women who think, oh, this is women in power. Oh, you're trying to take away my rights. The ability to end another human's life is not a right that anyone should have. Mother or father, man or woman. Right. And this is a human rights argument I'm making. I'm not making a religious one because this is a common um, deflection that a lot of pro-choicers say. Oh, you're not you're using your religious, your religious beliefs or your personal. Be no, 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 no. I'm making a human rights argument. Because we all know a fetus is really, all it really means is a human offspring, AKA your child. So if I say, hey, you can't, you're can't, you not allowed to kill your child, that's an accurate statement that I'm making. No matter what you wanna call your child, you can call your child fetus all you want, it's still your offspring, AKA your child. And you don't have a right to end it just because it happens to be an inconvenience in your life. And all this BS about it being for medical reasons, only, one, only less than 1% of all abortions that happens in America is due to medical reasons. So even if I grant you, hey, only for only for medical reasons, we'll ban any, any other circumstances, you still wouldn't agree with me. And I think a lot of disingenuous pro-choicers use the fact that medical reasons happen as an excuse to justify the rest of it. You can't use the exception to justify the rule. 
Here's another uh, propaganda thing that I kind of want to highlight as an example of why I think we have a propaganda problem. Just two years ago, 30% of Democrats believed that children should be taken away from unvaccinated parents. Nearly half of Democrats believed that the unvaccinated should be sent to camps. These are not tolerant, kind people. This is what a authoritarian ideology looked like for the longest time. Democrats have been painting themselves, liberals have been painting themselves as, oh, we're live, let live. We don't care what people do with their lives. We believe government is here to maximize freedom until you do something I don't agree with, until you do something I don't like, until you say you're not a liberal. Then I don't agree with that. But that's what they leave out. That's what I'm saying. They omit certain things that they do. Oh, we don't, we, we believe in religious freedom, but we, we shouldn't be teaching religious freedom in school, aka, hey, we don't want you to be Christian. We don't want you to have any uh, contrarian belief system that disagree with our worldview because a lot of liberalism is based on atheism, humanism, and that's what they want taught in school, right? If you come with an atheist book, oh, you're fine. You come with a Christian Bible, whatever, and you start reading in class, you may get kicked out of class. You're punishing, you make, you create, you're creating a negative consequences associated with what? Religion. So in, in, in that perspective, aren't you propagandizing people to be a certain have a certain worldview now let's flip it if i say hey um i want this to be a, a religion we respect all ideology here but you're not allowed to bring feminist books i ban feminism i ban atheism i ban humanism right and people are allowed to bring their uh, uh the the quran the bible uh the torah whatever religious book but you bring in an atheist book and then you get banned and kicked out of class what would you say You'll be saying the same thing I'm saying. So if it's not fair for that example, how can you justify it here in this example? The neutral stance will be, hey, we're not going to be actively teaching it, but you're allowed to bring your all your different ideology inside the classroom and debate it out. And this is what I'm saying. I think I want a, a more contrarian classroom where there's not one person leading the class. It's like a contrarian view. Like, hey, here's the right position on this. Here's the left position on this. You make the decision. I think that will be a more fruitful education system, and this will uh, decrease the amount of propaganda that we're experiencing today. By understanding that a left, the leftist entire belief system revolves around there being a constant oppressor versus oppressed narrative, leaving out any form of nuance because it ultimately is religious dogma, right? And this is what atheism claimed that they wanted to fix, right? This is why we they allow atheism to be taught in classrooms, but not the Bible, not the like, not other religious uh, ideology. At this point, in this circular, in this secular society today, I believe any ideological, any ideology, any ideology, ugh, I can't say words today, any ideological framework can be considered a religion in this day and age. Feminism can be considered a religion. Atheism can be considered a religion, right? Because if you're looking at it from a secular view, all of it is, is hey, this is a, 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 a mental framework which this individual or a belief system in which this individual operates in the world. So atheism meet that definition, feminism meet that definition, liberalism meet that definition. So you're gonna, you're gonna have to ban all these ideas. You're gonna have to restrict all these ideas. And this is what I'm talking about. It's like no, I think the solution to it is allow everything in classrooms, not everything, things that are appropriate in classrooms, aka things that are are beneficial for the nation the community learning about sex at what seven eight years old is not beneficial to kids to the society or to the community at large i think that's something parents should handle but i think uh, as, in regards to reading writing and arithmetic we need to teach more philosophy in class because i think with philosophy you learn how to disseminate and evaluate knowledge I think that's the important part. I think that's what we that's what uh, we're missing in our culture today. But I digress. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you have your thoughts? I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.